At the age of three, I wondered how I could get fancy years like Spock. And I came up with these creative ideas, and I thought that was the best. And of course, like just two days ago, I found out you can buy that at the Smithsonian here. <laughs> what I was also very curious about and often asked my dad was, if there were shocks on the moon, I don't know why, but I think that was one of the steps for me to get into this industry that I was very curious to know if there were sharks in the moon. And talked to my dad about time travel and maybe going to the moon and came up with these crazy ideas. So what about it? The fact I'm trying to make here is I think you all probably relate to such ideas that the fact that when we were kids, we all were much more curious and creative than we are today. The fascination we had for things to solve problems and when everything seemed possible, any idea seemed possible. But somewhere along when life happens, we kind of set our creative hats aside. And we get into trying to accumulate in, or get into the acquisition of technical knowledge in math, science, and technology. What we do forget is that in order to solve the epic challenges of humanity and space exploration, we need as much creativity as we need to solve rocket equations. In fact, along with technical skills, creativity is one of the most fundamental skills to make meaningful breakthroughs. So let's talk about my favorite subject, spacesuits. We all remember this iconic image of human space exploration, the Apollo spacesuit. The 21 layers complex garment that actually enabled that small step for us to make the giant leaps we are making today in space exploration. So what about spacesuits? Well, in order to keep you from the extreme environments, be it vacuum, temperature control, waste management, what have you, plus giving you the dexterity to actually work on planetary surfaces, it's a hard job. It's, it's not a trivial one. Did you all know that back in the 1960s, it was not just engineers and scientists trying to solve this problem and come up with these iconic spacesuits, but we actually had a lingerie company and fashion designers help us develop the spacesuits. A glance into the evolution of spacesuits actually, if anything, reveals one thing, that the best ideas emerge from the intersection of technology, arts, and creativity. And in fact, it took 24 iterations of spacesuit, 24 different designs for us to make that one spacesuit that would keep our astronauts alive on the moon come to fruition. Spacesuit design has not only been influenced by, but it also has influenced several fields from medicine as well as hot couture. And again, once again, we stand today at the intersection of technology, arts, and creativity in order to solve the many exploration challenges we have ahead of us for beyond Earth orbit destinations. We are now working on the latest technologies, both with creativity and our scientists and engineers are working together to make this happen. I want to tell a small story about how the power of imagination and creativity is actually helping me personally solve one of the most technical challenges for future human spaceflight missions, particularly our spacesuits. If you have actually noticed the video or videos in the past about how astronauts surveyed the, planet, uh, the surface of the moon, their white suits actually turned gray because of the dust problem they saw on the moon which we did not think was a trivial one, which we, we thought was a trivial one when, before we launched our astronauts onto the moon. But once they got there, dust, oh boy, it got into everything. It abraded their spacesuits, it got into their lunar habitats. They actually, one of the astronauts on the Apollo 17 mission had a hole in his spacesuit. And this was all within the 24 hours of cumulative extravehicular activities they did on the surface of the moon. 
Now imagine we want to go back there and we want to spend more than six months or so outpost missions. And we really need robust spacesuits for that to happen. So how do we actually solve this problem? The complexity of the spacesuit, if you look at the spacesuit, it has this complex structure. You have to build within the constraints of the spacesuit, the extreme environments, the Teflon-coated outer surface. So I went in search of what I could do to help solve this dust problem. And this is where, again, I had to become a kid and put on my creative hat again and go through and find out what technology would best fit and started looking at how we actually solve our, our, our solving dust problems here on Earth and even probably solar panels and rigid surfaces that are out there. And I ran into this unique material called the carbon nanotube fibers, which is the next breakthrough material. But how do I take this material and actually mold it to fit the spacesuit and protect us for future missions? That's where I drew inspiration from Spider-Man and Batman. And the result started developing what I call is the spider system, spacesuit integrated carbon nanotube dust ejection removal system. Say that three times. What this is is drawing inspirations from those superhero uh, figures. I wanted to kind of set up a force field on the spacesuit and energize those carbon nanotube fibers in order to repel the dust. And right now, we are actually working on a bigger prototype to scale this technology. But while I continue to work on that technology, and while I really hope that one day this does make it into future spacesuits, I want to leave you with two things. The first, you don't have to be an aerospace engineer or a rocket scientist in order to contribute to space exploration. Creativity will also enable you to do that. And what it matters is the passion and the drive you have to solve the greatest challenges. And you have to go find what drives you to be creative. What is that one passion that you really want to contribute towards? And that could be helping humanity solve the greatest challenges of space exploration. With that, thank you very much, SGAC, and thank you all.